to you all in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me a good opportunity to share my testimony, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let me start with a story. There was this little boy. He became a believer. And then he started reading the Bible. And one day he was sitting in the garden uh, on the bench. And he was reading about uh, how God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. And then he came to the portion uh, where the Israelites were, uh, uh, I mean, the Egyptians were coming to attack uh, the Israelites. And they came to the border of the Red Sea. And then he read in this that uh, when Moses raised his hands, God actually parted the Red Sea. He was so excited about it. And he said, hallelujah, praise God. My God is a God of the impossible. He parted the Red Sea. And there was this guy who was also a Christian. He was not a believer. He thought when he heard this, he went to this boy and asked him, what are you so excited about? He said, you know what? God parted the Red Sea and the Israelites could walk through that Red Sea and get on the other side. And this guy said, 
hey, what's so great about it? He said, God parted the Red Sea. He said, no, there was only 10 inch water there. And people could actually walk through that and reach the other side. And this guy felt a little bit sad. And this man thought he did a great job. He bought some enlightenment to this young boy. And he said, okay, that's okay now. Let me go. And as he was going, then he heard the boy shout again, hallelujah, praise God. He's the God of the impossible. And this guy thought, what happened now? I told him it's only 10 inch and people could just walk through. So he went back to the boy and he asked him, What's, what happened now? He said, praise God, my God is a God of the impossible. He said, but there was only 10 inch water there and the Israelites could go through. No, no, it's not that. The Egyptian drowned in the 10 inch of water. That is my God. He is the impossible God. Amen. How many of you believe that he is an impossible God? Amen. I didn't joke when I said I'm going to share my testimony. But uh, as Pastor Arun was speaking, you know, just after our worship time, the storms in life. Maybe we all are going through a storm. But I want you to tell you something today. Even before we came in, God was saying that those storms will be settled today. Amen. There might be something impossible in your life. Maybe something that you have been praying for all these years. But today, I believe the word will be accompanied by signs and wonders. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to talk to you about is there anything too hard for the Lord. All right. I need to go back <clears throat> many years ago. Uh, we had a phone call from home. I was there. My wife was there. And we were at home and we received this phone call. And the phone call was from my brother. He just called to tell me that mommy passed away. She was in the hospital and uh, she had done some angiogram on her and then there was internal bleedings and uh, the internal bleeding had spread everywhere. They had taken her from a place called Calicut to Bangalore in a hospital called Hridhyalaya and there they had done an operation for her to remove her veins, uh, arteries from different places where it was ruptured, they corrected it, all that. And she was on the third day in the ICU and uh, uh, she was uh, transferred that day afternoon to the normal ward. And uh, when she was in the normal ward, it believed, I heard that uh, water went into her lungs. She stopped breathing. And uh, my brother immediately called us and told us that she died. And I could hear my dad screaming on the other side. And uh, <clears throat> uh, that was the time we had the phone call. So me and Bina was there. And uh, God just told us one thing. He said, bind the spirit of death. And all we prayed was, we asked my brother, are you close to her? And he said, yes, they are rushing her somewhere. I said, run behind her, lay your hands on, him, on her. And all we did was, Lord, we bind the spirit of death in her. And that was all. And uh, just to continue the story, uh, they somehow revived her after about 15, 20 minutes. They took her there, did whatever, and she came back to life. Next day morning, I landed up in Bangalore. I was in this hospital, and they have a nice MTR canteen down. So I was sitting there with my dad, my sister, and my brother. And they were telling me all the negative things that the doctor said. The doctor said that there has not been any blood supply to her brains, no oxygen. She will be a vegetable. She will not be able to recognize anybody. Uh, she will not be able to do anything. She will be like bedridden, and she would be just a vegetable. And to be frank, I was sitting there and listening to all this negative things that was being said. And I literally started crying. And uh, I started crying. And I was crying there. And God asked me one question. He asked me, Dennis, when you were ministering to others, you went and told them, don't worry, God can do it in your life. There were people who were sick. You went and told them, don't worry, God can heal you. When people were going through troubles, you went and told them, trust in the Lord. He can do things in your life. And God asked me this question. What about you today? Dennis, do you believe that I can do this in your mother's life? And that day I literally cried. And I said, Lord, forgive me for not believing in you even at that moment. And uh, God asked me this question. It's from Genesis chapter 18. He asked me this question, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And this morning, 
I believe God is asking some of, this, some of us the same question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And then, uh, just to continue on the testimony, then uh, they allowed me to get into the IICU uh, where I went. My mom was all on wires and tubes and missions and all that. I just sat next to her and I just prayed with her. And after about, uh, I think, 20 minutes or so, uh, she just got up and she asked me this question, son, when did you come? And she lived five years. She's no more now. Uh, she lived five years after that. And she was discharged from that hospital with no ailments, nothing. God did a miracle for her. Today, God is asking each one of us from Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah will have a son. I want to read from Genesis chapter 18, starting on words 1. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of memory, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground, and said, My Lord... If I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass by on your servant. Please let a little water be bought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread and you may refresh your hearts. After that you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. He then brought some hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I am, I, I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surely bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, thou didst laugh. You know, many of us, when we are in some situation in a crowd, uh, we, we would have been the only person to have laughed. And suddenly we'll realize that nobody else is laughing, so we change that laugh into a cough. And then we will wish that we were invisible and we were not there at all, you know. The same thing happened to Sarah. And she immediately said to the Lord that I did not laugh. But the Lord knows even our thoughts, you know. And he knew exactly why Sarah laughed. I mean, look at these words he says. Um, and, they said to, and they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? Now Abraham never told these three people that Sarah was his wife. Her name was Sarah. But they knew it. And they asked, where is she? And I believe one of the reasons they were asking this is so that she will hear her name being pronounced from outside and she will come and listen to what they were saying. Abraham already had the promise that he's going to have a son. But Sarah did not get that promise maybe except from Abraham. And here was God himself speaking to Sarah and saying at the same time, you are going to be blessed with a child. Look at the impossible situation there. Abraham and Sarah were so old. It could be that she was in a menopause stage and it was impossible for her to bear a child. But our God is a God of the impossible he can make the impossible possible for each one of us. The same way that he did for Sarah. The same way he did for my mother. He can change every situation in each one of our lives. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it is a sickness. Maybe it's a back pain that you're having for many years. Our God is a God that could do the impossible. And to this morning, I believe that he is going to touch each one of us. Those who believe in him. Why did Sarah laugh? Sarah laughed because she didn't have faith. She was looking at herself. Many of us, we look at ourselves. We look at our strength. But God brought them to a place 
way they had to surrender the strength to God. They understood the weakness. They understood they were so old. They understood their body could not bear to have a child. They understood that it was not possible for them. They tried to do it on their own. Many of us try to do things of our own. We try to rule things of our own. We try to depend upon our strength. We try to depend on ourselves. What did happen to Abraham and Sarah when they depended on their own strength? They had Hagar. They had Ismail that was born out of it. But that was not what God plans for each one of them. We, we could be going through situations in our life and we would be trying to do it in our own strength. But today, I want you to know that nothing is too hard for our God. Maybe it is a back pain that you've been having for years together. God can touch you and change you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe it's a financial situation that you are going through. Maybe it is a job situation that you are going through. Maybe it is some sickness that the doctors have told over your life. But I want to let you know, is there anything too hard for the Lord? You know, the same question that was asked has been answered in Jeremiah 32 words. I think it's word 17. And it says, our Lord God, Behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy power and thy outstretched arm. There is nothing too difficult for you. Amen. A God who made everything out of nothing. A man who made man out of the dust and breathed into his nostrils. Is there anything too hard for him? Nothing is too hard for him. Amen. Maybe you have been praying for something for too long. You have almost started doubting whether God is hearing our prayers. But let me tell you, nothing is too hard for the Lord. And today, as you believe that it is possible for Him, all things are possible to Him who believes. Amen. If you believe that your God can do it tonight, this morning, you can experience that miracle in your life. Amen. Praise God. So, God brings us to the end of our strength. Abraham and Sarah, they came to a place where they knew that there's nothing more they can do. They tried their version. They tried to build, bring forth a child thinking that that is what God wants. But nothing happened with that. And God brought forth the promise. And if you read later in Genesis, it talks about how uh, uh, Isaac was born. Amen. So we need to believe God. The same God who's asking each one of us, uh, asked Abraham and Sarah, is anything too hard for the Lord? Today, are we just laugh, laughing at it like Sarah laughed and did not believe? Or do we believe that my God can do the impossible? What do you believe? Your God can do the impossible? I believe most of us have experienced some sort of a miracle in our life. When things looked, when things looked impossible, God made it possible in each one of our lives. Let's look at two other uh, incidents in the Bible in uh, Luke chapter 1. Uh, and uh, Luke chapter 18, we'll talk about two more incidents. Okay, I'll read from verse 26 onwards. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph to the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this could be. And the angel said to her, to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of the, his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know no man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that, whole, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Here again are two imp impossible situations. The first one is Mary. Mary knew no man. And the angel came and told her that you're going to conceive. Is that a possible thing? Without knowing a man, how could a woman conceive? 
and that was an impossible thing to happen and he said when the holy spirit overshadows you you will conceive and you will have a child and his name shall be called jesus so what happened to the impossible situation the impossible situation here is humanly it was impossible but with god all things are possible amen so the inability of the human being when it combines with the supernatural ability of god the miracle happens and that's what happened to mary's life in mary's life there was no way she could have conceived because she was a virgin and today we know it as a virgin birth but when the supernatural ability of god the natural the supernatural ability of god came in contact with the human inability what happened is a miracle took place and the impossible became possible mary asked this question how can it be today many of us are asking god the same question god how can this happen in my life lord how will this solution come forth in my life lord how can i get this healing in my life lord how can i get out of debts in my life you might be asking the same question but when god's supernatural ability comes in contact with the human inability a miracle will take place and that's what's going to happen in you know, each one of our lives let's look at the second uh, impossible situation elizabeth it talks in words 36 that she was pregnant for how many months six months here was a lady she was barren right through her good age she was barren and she could not conceive at all and then now she is in her old age and the angel of the lord told her that she is six months pregnant an impossible situation just like sarah she could not bear child it's in her old age that god did a miracle and she bore child similarly in elizabeth's life the bible says she was barren and behold thy cousin elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren in her good time in the time when she was reproductive she was barren and she could not conceive a child that was an impossible situation and that barren lady when she becomes old her situation gets worsen that there's no possibility of her bearing a child at all but what happened the supernatural grace of god came upon her and her inability became ability amen and the miracle took place in her life and the angel comes and announces that she is how many months pregnant six months pregnant and then it says for with god nothing shall be impossible the bible says he is the same yesterday today and forever the bible says god is not a respecter of people or persons what he could do in these people's life he can do in yours and my life are we willing to believe that my god is a god of the impossible we sang the song right do you believe that god could do something in your life this morning amen let's look at one more uh, scriptures before uh, we start praying uh, the same thing and now jesus himself tells us about the same thing luke chapter 18 let's go to luke chapter 18 Here's the uh, one about the wealthy ruler, starting at verse eighteen. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, "Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life?" And Jesus said unto him, "Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments: Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother." And he said, "All these have I kept from my youth up." Then Jesus said heard these things he said unto him yet lackest thou one thing sell all thou hast and distribute unto the poor and thou shall have treasure in heaven and come follow me and when he heard this he was very sorrowful for he was very rich and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful he said how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of god for it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of god and they heard it said who then can be saved and he said 
the things that are impossible with man are possible with God. Amen. Here is Jesus himself saying this word. The things that are impossible with man is possible with God. Let's just look at a very briefly on this particular uh, scriptures that uh, Jesus tells us about. There was this ruler and the ruler came to Jesus and said, what shall I do to be saved? And Jesus said that you, you need to keep the commandments. And this guy says, right from my young age, I have been keeping all, my, all the commandments. And Jesus said, go sell what you have, give it to the poor, come and follow me. What was wrong with this guy? There was one thing that was lacking in him. And that was dependence on God. He was depending upon his riches for everything. And God just wanted to prove to him that unless you depend upon me, nothing is possible for you. If you want to be saved, there is no way you could save yourself. Your money cannot save you. You cannot buy a ticket to heaven. Maybe today you could buy a ticket to moon and took it to the mass. But money will not take you to the kingdom of God. There was one thing that was lacking in this rich ruler. And that was the dependency on Jesus Christ. Dependency on God. So that's why it's easy for a camel to pass through a needle rather than a man, uh, a rich man to get into the kingdom of God. Why? Because as long as you depend on yourself, as long as you depend on your strength, and this rich ruler was depending on his wealth for everything. And that's why God had to tell him, go sell everything to the poor and then you follow me. Amen. And then God comes up with that words, what is impossible with man is possible with God. God made it possible for you and me to have the gift of salvation. He sent us His only Son, Jesus Christ, that He would die on that cross. And not only die on that cross, but rise again on the third day and be seated on the right hand of God the Father. Today, the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. With man, it is impossible to enter the kingdom of God because our righteousness are the, like the right, uh, filthy rags. That's what the word of God says. All our righteousness are like filthy rags and we will be never able to complete the standards required by God. But through God, all things are possible. Amen. Here is Jesus himself telling us that word. Through God, all things are possible. Do you believe? Do you believe? We just sang that song and I believe every one of us sang, I believe, I believe, I believe. Let's not say it just with our mouth. Let's believe it in our heart. Because today, God wants to make that impossible situation possible in your life. Amen. I'm just going to close with this. Many years ago, all right, I fell down from the roof of Alain Cement Factory. And I broke my D12 vertebrae. I was admitted in Aljimi Hospital. And uh, the first thing the doctor said that your nerve is compressed. So there's no operation. I'm talking about way back. Uh, there was no operation that you could do. You'll be paralyzed for life. And that was all the verdict that they gave. I was shifted out from Aljimi Hospital to Alain, uh, from Al Mafrak Hospital in Abu Dhabi. In Mafrak Hospital, they will not take me. Because in the discharge note that was from Alain Hospital, they had written in red letters, Lama. And we, I had no idea what Lama means. And that means left against medical advice. In my situation, I should not be moved out of that bed because I had little movement on my left side. And because it's a vertebrae, a little shift in that would get me fully paralyzed. And uh, they only allowed me to go. Because I told my house is in Abu Dhabi, they allowed me to go. And I came to this hospital, and the doctor, uh, they refused to take me in because I have to sign off so many wavering, waiver of that, the insurance, this. And finally, they took me to New Medical Center. I was admitted in New Medical Center. I was there for, I think, three or four months. I was there. They do nothing. Give me a morning injection when I wake up to go to sleep because of the pain. In the evening when I wake up, they give me one that injection to go to sleep. Because there was nothing else that could be done. And the doctor said, my son, you might not walk again in your life at all. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Today I'm standing. Today I'm climbing scaffoldings. I'm jumping. I'm going to the offshore rigs. Climbing all that. It's only the grace of God. Amen. Nothing is impossible for God. Is the same God who is here in our midst today. Because the word of God says if two of you, I mean, where two or three are there, he is in our midst. He is here in our midst today. I don't know what situation you're going through. I don't know what the storms in your life are. I don't know what is that healing that you're looking for. I don't know what is that that you're praying for all these years. God wants to do it in your life. If you believe, if you believe that my God is the God of the impossible, like uh, God said, is there anything too hard for me? 
I believe God is asking each one of us this question. Is there anything too hard for me? Doesn't matter what you will think is humanly impossible. Humanly impossible. You've got a bad report. Maybe in your workplace, you've been going through a storm in your workplace. Maybe you're looking for a job and nothing is happening. Maybe you are going through a sickness. Maybe it's a family relationship. Maybe there's a storm between husband and wife. It doesn't matter what. Do you believe that God can restore your marriage? Do you believe that God can bless you in your workplace? Do you believe that He is a healer? By His stripes we are healed. God is the same God yesterday, today and forever. In the Bible, if you look at all the things that He has done, there was nothing too hard for Him. God is not surprised at what's going to happen. God is not surprised at the situation that you are going through. God wants you to believe that nothing is too hard for the God. Amen.